TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. Because, you know, it's getting kind of heavy in Australia. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is not an Australian episode. This, this is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 4, Episode 17. YouTube, this is my warning. I personally, in this lower corner, will not be cursing throughout this entire video. And there will be no curse words, probably for the first two, three minutes of the video. And minimal cursing throughout. So please, don't yellow mark me. <laughs> uh, anything else? We do got Patreon, we do got merch, and we got Twitch.com. The username is right at the bottom if you want to catch lives. Let's get into it. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. What happens when you get into debt? Hold on. Here we go. Research has shown that almost 60% of UK small and medium-sized building firms don't always receive the full amount they invoice for, forcing many to reclaim the balance through the courts. Hundreds of thousands of small firms have to write off unpaid bills, putting them under financial pressure. Small and medium-sized building firms of the UK lose nearly two billion each year as clients fail to pay it. Dang, two billion? Ain't no way I'm letting go of two billion. Even though that's the accumulative amount. Like, that's a lot. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor travel. Here we go, Stuart and Ian, man. I ain't seen them in three, four, five episodes. Last time they had Stuart answering phone calls. You know what I'm saying? All over oh. England and Wales, seizing goods and collecting debts. It's 8.15 a.m and they're on their way to Blackpool to collect nearly three and a half thousand pounds owed by builder Jonathan Smith to a dissatisfied client. Blackpool, mmm, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The client claimed that Mr. Smith did not complete a job he'd been paid for. How much is he owe? Three thousand three hundred and fifteen pounds. Oh, I'll be interested. The agent's high court powers Give them the right to remove goods to cover the debt if payment isn't made. They immediately spot Mr. Smith's work van and a car in the driveway. Oh, what we got? A four-plate van and an 08-plate Monday. This job is going to be anything but straightforward. We starting off with negativity, is that what they mean? Hello there, sir. Uh, we're after Jonathan. Speaking. Jonathan, hello, my name is Mr McCracken, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent from Direct Collection Bailiffs Limited. We're here to execute a writ, sir, for the total amount of £3,315. Oh, God, he let him in nicely. Wallpaper what happened terrible. Was, he went to court, mm. and the court never sent me a letter. Right, OK. So I've written back to the court, yeah. because I couldn't afford to pay the £250. Yeah. To put it aside. Right, okay. Well, uh, at the moment it's still active, which means that we're here to collect the balance in full or remove goods, sir. So you need to see what you can do to try and raise some funds. So the only thing I've got is 200 cash, that's yeah. all I've got. Right, it's, it won't be enough, sir. So, like I said, we will have to take control of goods. If we do have to remove goods, sir, sorry to say, it goes up to £4,062. Well, the thing is, I can't pay it, that's, yeah. that's okay. the end of the yeah. Okay. As Mr. Smith can't pay, the active High Court writ means Allows. that Stuart has the right to seize Take any of his assets to cover the debt. <coughs> I'll say With it. With their possessions now at risk, Mr. Smith's wife intervenes. You've got a job to do and get that back, but yeah. you're not looking at our position. All you no. do is you yeah, still Yeah, there's, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. We've got nothing to give. Yeah. That's it. 
every day to take control of goods. Yeah, so there's no position to look. We, there's that's not their job. They come there for one order. I mean, one thing and one thing only is to collect. To a certain extent, wouldn't be the end of it. For example, there's extra charges, storage charges, etc., yeah, etc. Okay. No, no. Well, put me in jail. Yeah, that's well, the only way to do it. Don't you're getting upset now. It's not about the kids, it's those, disgusting. Those are exams as well. It's it's like exams and you're doing this to these. I'm not doing it. Well, you know what I mean? It's yeah. more appropriate yeah. time though, you know. Yeah, why y'all why, why would they try to press that upon him? Go put your kids in the room or something. You have that capability. Hey, go up to your room real quick while, while grown talk, people talk. There's a door right here. Close it with them on the other side. With kids in the morning. It's is what it is, I'm afraid. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what? I just can... get out of the house, do what you gotta do, just get out of the house. I can't stand this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm saying yeah. what you want. I'm yeah. not I'm yeah. not particularly bothered now yeah. because you're upsetting the kids mm. and that's oh, I'm, it. I'm, I'm not Take upsetting the kids, sir. Yeah. I've got no money to give you. Yeah. Simple as okay, that. Okay, so we, we have to do our job, which is taking control of goods. Do your good. job then! But Come on, let's get you to school. I think the single most hardest thing about this. It's about to get even more negative because you're trying to take them to school. The cars are definitely blocked in. The job is when kids get involved. It's it's not their choice. It's not their fault. They're just in the face of it, I suppose. And when you've got a family that want to protect the children, it can be quite emotional. It's a sensitive situation, but the agents are duty bound to stay in the house until the case is resolved. To avoid causing further distress, Stuart and Ian decide to wait until the children have left for school before taking further action. You, you're lucky, Sorry, there's nothing I can do. Okay. You know our kids are so yeah. stressed over these exams at the minute. I'll just have a bit okay. of compassion, for goodness sake. What do you want me to do? Outside, so no, you can't no, I can't do that, I'm afraid. How can you do it? It's an unpaid high court bit. Have you got no compassion whatsoever? Awesome. With the children now on their oh, way to school, okay, you walking them to the bus stop or something? Okay. Ian calls for a finance check on the two vehicles in the driveway. Hi, James. It's Ian. Can you put me through to someone for HBI check, please? I know I sound like a complete a-hole because if they would have come to my house and my daughter would have got frustrated, I'd have acted the same way as them. But at the same time, me looking from the outside in, it not being my situation, I can understand both sides of the fence. You know what I'm saying? They're here to do a job. You let them in the house, they got to stay in the house because they have the power to do so. And you want them out the house because the kid, I get it. Cheers. Right. Both vehicles are free of finance. The debt's kind of around about three and a half thousand pounds, and between the two, they're worth about three thousand pounds. It's not far off the full amount, really. So it is worth our time taking them. Makes your job harder when there's kids involved, because. Dang, remember when vehicles didn't cost that much, man? The platinum alone inside of the, uh. inside of the. the little exhaust. That's going to raise the price of vehicles along okay, nowadays. Wants to see it. They're the, to enforce the agents threatening to remove goods. But it is what it is. We've got a writ to collect. Let's just hope they can raise something. So uh, we can get this matter resolved. Both vehicles have now been seized. 30 minutes later, Mr. Smith returns. Stuart gives him another chance to pay. Is there anything you can do? Anything? I've just had to send my daughter yeah. in bits. Do you, know, do you know how that feels? Do you know how that feels? Yeah. In front of all the parents? Do you know how it feels? Just what? on the verge, mm. believe me. Just give me a minute. Okay. Yeah. This simple debt recovery has become... Chill out now, remember you ain't got no money to be fixing doors. ...emotionally charged. <laughs> With Mr. Smith refusing to speak to the agents, will they ever get the three and a half thousand pounds they came for? He and they're tearing stuff down. Calm down. Let 
That's your stuff in there, you Stuart terrible. McCracken and Ian Taylor were in Blackpool to collect nearly three and a half thousand pounds owed by a builder. Oh, I forgot this was Blackpool. To pay the two hundred and fifty pounds, put it aside. Couldn't pay. Concerned that the children had seen it all, tempers boiled over. Get out, fields. Just give me a minute. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, with Mr. Smith shut in the kitchen, Ian tries to reason with his wife. Any money paid today is held by our company for 14 days, which gives a chance. Honestly, we've only got 220 for safe if I knew. Obviously. We have the money, I'd do it. Cost some wood. I haven't oh, got that it. That kitchen is finished. He, that kitchen is done. Then Mr. Smith re emerges. There's nothing I can do. There must be something. There's nothing. I swear to we God. Have you got, have you got we, anything? No, nothing. I'm not being I don't have anything. We've been made back before, right? We yeah. have nothing. It's one of those, so if you can't pay anything, then the goods will have to be removed. Oh, so you say it works, man? That's what he said? He said the, um... He said they've been bankrupted before? Is that what she said? Yeah. yeah. We have... You got, have you got we, anything? No, nothing. I'm not being I don't have anything. We've been made back before, right? We yeah. have nothing. We've been bankrupted. So how is he still running a business? It could be in her name now. It's one of those, so if you can't pay anything, then the goods will have to be removed. Oh, so you say it works, man? Yeah, that'll be removed as well. Take me down, that's it, I'm screwed. Completely and utterly screwed. Yep. So there's no money coming in from anywhere, so you can come back and come back as many times as you want. Yeah. But once it's all gone, you can't have anything, can you? So it's wasting your time, the court's time, everybody else's time. When we see somebody's livelihood or tools of the trade, we have to assess up. Are they going to be able to work after we take control of the vehicle? Are they going to be able to earn any money once we take control of that vehicle? Or will that vehicle clear the balance? But we've got to put our emotions to the side and weigh up, is this going to be the correct thing to do or not? I don't know what I can say to you. That, that's all I can do. I've got nobody who's got any money. That is my livelihood outside. Without that, then, yeah. kids don't eat, do they? Simple as that. I'm a car to it. With Mr. Smith's financial situation now clear, Stuart calls the office. As much as people say, man, Stuart don't got no heart, he just a blank expression person. Wow, why did I... I said as much as people say Stuart is bogus and he ain't got no heart, he really be, you know what I'm saying? He just like to take it all the way to the edge to make sure that you ain't got nothing. Then he gonna call a company. And make sure, you know what I'm saying, to see what he could do. They've got nothing, mate. He's, he sm he's smashed up the kitchen to pieces, the holes in the wall and everything. Um, uh, so, so I reckon if he had any money, mate, he would have paid us. No, nothing. A absolutely nothing. Living on the breadline here, I think. Mr Smith maintains that he had to stop work on the building job because the claimant refused to pay for all the work needed. There was problems with the property, leaks, everything else. And it was all adding up to the, the stage where he used all his money. So I turned around and said, look, it can't go on anymore. That's it. You either pay some more money or the job don't commence. That was it then. It stemmed from that. That's because you've got a bit of that. You can just go to court and pay all this. I can't afford to put cases aside all the time. I'm an everyday person, mate. That's it. Go out to work. If there's work there, and that's it. We've got no luxury. You know what I mean? The kids haven't been around here for three years. And if we do go... He's a maintenance man. He can fix everything that he broke in the kitchen. Oh, wait. It's only down south. Got 200 quid cash, that's it. Stuart decides to throw the family a lifeline. Right, what I've recommended the best thing to do is we do what they call a controlled goods agreement, which means everything stays put it on for a seven day hold so it gives you a chance to speak to the court. If it does get set aside, it's the end of the matter. If it doesn't get set aside, it means sadly that we will have to come back. Uh, that's okay, fine. but it give, at least it gives you seven days. Oh. So I'll just do the paperwork guys yeah, and we'll leave it to get on with the rest of your day. All right. The controlled goods agreement means that Mr. Smith now has seven days to either pursue his appeal with the courts or pay the £3,315 
You gotta pursue with the court, man. That's the only way. And save his belongings. He comes across as a guy that if he genuinely had the money, he would have sorted it out, so he wouldn't want to put his kids through that. He's gone to court, he's done the right thing. If it turns out that it swings in his favour, that's great for him and his family. But if it goes against him, it means we've got to go through all this again in seven days. In the nicest part. See, that's the thing, man. You're a maintenance man. You come there to do a job and your business is all legitimate. And they didn't have no money. You shouldn't even have went that route. Like, oh, you ain't got no money. We just ain't going to show up no more. You should have just went the harshest route possible. You see what I'm saying? When you don't go that harsh route, somebody else will go that route on you. And now look where you've landed. You know what I'm saying? You could have simply went and took, like, I know here, like, say if you go to the mechanic and you can't pay them, they put a mechanical lien on your car. And if you don't pay them in a certain amount of time, sayonara to your car. You could do the same thing with the, you know, the building. I put a, I put a lien on your stuff from the work I've done that you have not paid for. And if you don't pay me, it's mine. I don't know if you if that's the same laws in the UK when it comes to that, but I also could be waffling. I don't know. Possible way. I've still got a job to do and I've still got a writ to execute. A report reveals that last year, 80% of UK companies were kept waiting for at least a month or longer to get invoices paid. It's estimated that more than 40,000 small and medium-sized businesses are owed more than £1 million in unpaid bills. The total amount of old... The total amount owed to both large and small businesses in 2015 was $31.3 We read that already, didn't we? No, we didn't. 31 is crazy. High Court Enforcement Agents Delroy and Dale Anglin are in Ilford, Essex. The father and son team... Essex, all right. ...have a writ to collect a debt of over £2,500 owed by Mr Samsel Ahmed to a frozen food company. Oh, it's that one there, the 04. If Samsel can't or won't pay today, the writ allows the agents to away. seize goods to offset the debt. Hello, my name is Dan Anglin, High Court Enforcement Agent. Looking for Mr. Samsul Ahmed. Does he live here, yeah? No. He doesn't live here? No, he's not home. Dan Anglin, High Court Enforcement Sam Agent. Yeah. I'm looking for a Mr. Samsul Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, why? Is, is he here? Uh, why, why, why? I've got a High Court writ against him. About what? Well, what relation are you to him? So I'm his son. You're his son? Yeah. Well, how old are you? I'm 19. What's the money for? Because I can't <laughs> tell you until I've spoken to him. Basically, where is my dad's in, not in the country at the moment, innit? But, however, when he comes back, I'll give you a shot. Who's this gentleman here, then? It's that my cousin brother. He's like my cousin brother. Cap. Cap. I knew we was going to get to one of them. That's your dad right there. All right. I don't want to be difficult, but can we see some ID, then? Because we don't know who's... Yeah, 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 yeah go on, man. It's cool, man. Immediately, the agents are suspicious that the older man is the debtor. It's my cousin, brother. Of course. Yeah. Cousin, brother. Yeah. <laughs> when the son comes out to get his ID from his car, the agents take the opportunity to enter the property. They need to find out who the older man really is. Is he your dad or uncle or something? Yeah, that was his name. The last man I'm saying. Yeah? The last man I'm saying. The last man I'm saying. How long has your dad been out of the country? He's, his dad's dying, basically. My granddad's dying. Like, right. So, and so he went on an emergency holiday with him. Is he contactable? I haven't got a bank of this number. Does anyone else have a number for him? No, I don't. And there's no way of contacting him in an emergency, no? No. The man who claims he's not the debtor, Samsul Ahmed, steps in to back up the younger man. Mr. Samsul is not living here. His name nothing here. Because that uh, house is his, uh, his wife's name. Which house are we talking about here? This house. This house. It might be his wife's house, but he must stay But here. he's not staying here. But some... 
Yeah, see, now you're talking too much. Now we for sure know you're him, because you know too many details. Probably, you know, that is between you. Know, okay, well, he must stay somewhere, because we've been up front with you, yeah? Okay. So you need to be up front yeah. with us. When people are under pressure, um, when you're speaking to them as an enforcement agent, they, the lies they come out with are quite laughable, but you've got to bite your bottom lip, really, because they've been quite serious, because they want you to believe them. Dale changes tactics. He hopes that putting the pressure on will flush out the man's real identity. Because we've got a high court writ, mm. even without him here, it means we'll have to take stuff today to cover the bill if it's not paid. Most of the stuff is online, though, so you can't... Well, you need to provide receipts and the card yeah. that paid for everything. With the threat of belongings being removed from the house, the older man gets his solicitor on the phone. Nah, we definitely know it's you now. Tell them I don't live here. Oh, so it is you. Dale doesn't understand the Bengali conversation. We speak to his uh, solicitor. His you know? solicitor, yeah? Yeah. He's Hello? Our uh, client is not here at the moment. And out of blue, he can't just come and try to... Uh, uh, That's a W lawyer. You work for me. Tell them what I tell you to tell them. <laughs> Letters were sent prior to our attendance today, so obviously we have let you know that. We can understand, but in between there should be some communication there has been letters, but we haven't had any response, which is why we're here. As it stands, it needs to be paid. Well, they will not pay you anything right now because... Okay, no worries. That's fine, no worries. And when there's a language barrier, um, it's, it's really difficult for us to know what's going on. They can hitch up a, a big plan and secure their story right there in front of us, and there's nothing we can do about it. We just have to work a bit harder. Although the agents see who car it is. suspect the older man is the debtor, he still claims he's not Samsul Ahmed. Dell cranks up the pressure again to try to get to the truth. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to walk around your house yeah. and I'm going to start listing things. Okay. Now, you're listing, yeah? And how many days are you going to give no, I'm going to, I'm listing to remove. Yeah, I know. You, you need to understand that. I yes. will remove today and now. Yeah. If we have to remove, it's going to go up. We're going to have to take a lot of stuff. Can you do me one favor, please? If I, if nothing, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, I can tell you something, yeah? Yeah. Give me a couple of days' time, yeah? A couple of days' time. And give me your contact no. number, yeah? No. <laughs> if you uh, give me a couple of days' time. Uh, it's too late. You should have led with the truth. The truth will set you free. Now you can't come behind a lie and try to, you know, beg for mercy. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Give me one week, only one week, yeah? And I can tell you, yeah? Honest to God, I'm gonna tell you, give me one week time, yeah? And I'm gonna do something, sort it out, please. The older man now appears to be taking responsibility for the debt, but he still hasn't revealed his true identity. Please, please. No. Yeah, because I don't okay. have any choice. Okay, okay. that's right, choice. okay. As Dell starts to make an inventory of goods, that TV's my uncle's, by the way. And it's also your says. Dale tries again to establish if the men really are father and son, and that the older man is the debtor. Do me a favour. Can you ring his phone? Just so I can close off my suspicions here. Can you ring his phone now? Yeah. Dale asks Samsol's son to call the older man's phone. He's using my dad's British number. He's using your dad's number. But He's using my dad's British number. Oh, that's your dad's phone. That's my dad's British number. Right. Cap, cap, cap. I'll tell you what makes sense to me is that that's your dad, and you man obviously need to say face. No, no, no. no. So that's like I'm a fool. Yeah. It's cool. So that's not an issue. I understand. Okay. Initially, you lied, so now you got to keep with that. Yeah? When you went to call him, suddenly he's got your dad's phone. So that's your dad, yeah? Hmm? Yeah. I understand yeah. why you've done it. Yeah. Listen, I don't need to sit down. Listen, it's your house. I understand. Hear me. I don't mind. At the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, yeah. let's just roll on, get this money so we can do what we do. <laughs> he can't even hold in his laugh no more. Finally, the older man confirms he is Samsul Ahmed, the debtor. Oh. I apologize. I apologize. Listen, I apologize. listen, you don't need to apologize. I understand yeah, your I reasons for doing it. Samsul, listen, listen. If you do not pay me, all the property that I've listed to be removed will be removed. 
With their lies exposed, Samsel and his son Newman suddenly start to discuss paying the debt. That's an ill dad. Yeah, you asking your son to go to his friends, but you're not having a game plan on how to play his friends back. They don't owe you nothing. But that's his boy, so they're going to do it. But they want their money back. You're about to ruin friendships. Money will ruin friendships, 100%. Newman leaves to try and raise the two and a half thousand pounds owed by his father. But if he fails to come back with an amount which will satisfy the claimant, the agents will start seizing goods. They're trying to get the money. It ain't really nothing to seize in here. To accept half of it. If they can get half of it, we'll sort out some form of arrangement. Um, and take it from there. But I, I want half of this money. Hey, what time is it? 30 minutes oh, later, 30 minutes. Newman arrives home with cash. 1,200. Newman has managed to raise nearly half the debt. It's enough for the agents to give Samsel Ahmed time to pay the balance. You need to good. print your name there, signature. But now he got to get the balance plus this. He still got to get all of it because now he owe his friends money. But if he doesn't pay the remaining £1,300 within 14 days, the agents will be back. We just have to persevere. And as you can see from the beginning, he had no money. None. He couldn't even raise money in the country. He couldn't even in the country. As he, <laughs> you know, we've ended up with him identifying himself as the debtor, apologising uh, for lying, apologising for lying, asking us to trust him further while he provided one thousand two hundred pounds. Not even W son and W son's friends. His friend, he got good friends. He got good homies. Well, well done, son. I'll teach you everything I know one day. <laughs> it's been a successful job for father and son team Dell and Dale. But in Stuart and Ian's next case... My husband's asking for yeah. you to take part. Is this... No, we don't want to see that. Let's just... Debt in the UK's farming industry has risen by almost a billion pounds over the past five years. Last year, one in five farms generated a loss and nearly 20% faced major financial problems. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor are in Corwin, Wales. We've got to wrap this up with uh, Paul and Steve, for sure. To collect nearly £3,000 owed by farmer Dylan Hughes to a supplier. I'll tell you what's gorgeous around here, though, isn't it? Yep. Very green, isn't it? Yeah, sheep everywhere. Of course, the sheep everywhere makes Wales. I couldn't live around here. I'd be too bored. Like, imagine me or one of, like, no, nah, let's say me. Imagine me going to go live out in the middle of the farm. What would I do? Actually farm? Like, I don't... Ah. <laughs> if Mr. Hughes can't or won't pay, the agents have the power to remove goods to offset the debt today. This farm here. Yeah, it looks like it. Right, let's go and have a chat, eh? Careful when hopping them farmers gates, they got licenses for firearms. Stuart immediately spots an asset. Your HPI on that, mate. Yep. While Ian checks whether the vehicle is free of finance, Stuart goes to find Mr. Hughes. It's a nice house.
no one appears to be in. On finance? Woo! Okay, all right, thanks a lot. What's up, mate? It's on finance. Is it? With the van on finance, the agents can't seize it. They go in search of other assets. There's a truck here. Done the finance on that. See what it says. When we come to a farm, we sort of rubbing our hands together to a certain extent. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff that you could take. Nine times out of ten, the farm machinery, one of them, at least one of them, is not going to be on finance. And it's worth quite a lot of money. Like a tractor is £60,000. A quad bike is £5,000. So, it's a gold mine. Through finance. OK, just a couple more bits in here. There's a JCB telehandler. The scan is free of finance, so we're going to put notice of enforcement on it. Telehandler in the quad. Yeah, both free of finance. Yeah, thing is, they probably sharing this farm, probably sharing this, like people are leaving their stuff there to be watched after. Although the value of the piece. assets seized are worth more than the £2,700 debt, the agents hope the threat of removing them will prompt payment. And as the agents wait at the gates, someone arrives home. We're after Mr Hughes. He's not here. Right, OK, are you able to get him on the phone? What for? It's an outstanding high court writ. Let me see the address. I can't show you anything because you're not Dylan Hughes, I'm afraid. But we have taken control of the Scania lorry, the JCB and the Quad. He doesn't own them. Mm. Who, who owns them? Dion Hughes, my son. Right. My husband doesn't own them. OK, so we need to see some documentation. Do you want to speak to him? On the yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this him? Is it? Is that, oh. Hello. Is that Mr. Hughes? Mr. Hughes. Good afternoon. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Um, we've been sent with regards to an outstanding High Court writ, sir, for the balance of two thousand seven hundred and thirty-six pounds. Are you able to make a payment? They can't make a payment. Right. What about we've got partial? to take control of goods. You see. Yeah, the thing is, I don't even know who the claimant is. We simply get a high court rate to come and execute, as you can probably understand. But the fact is, well, we need we need to, the balance paid before we remove any goods. So you need to make you need to clear the balance. If not, we'll, we'll have to remove the goods today. That's why we're here. How much can you give? But I need to prove. Let me see. Let me see that. Hang on, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, He's still talking at the moment. Him. It's perfect. I need to tell him. Unbelievable. <laughs> They put the teleporter down, which you don't own, and they put the quad bike down, which you don't own. We need to see some you documentation. Don't own. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, well, I'll be coming in, so don't worry about it. No, I'll be coming in, so I've already been in, so I can come in again. Well, of course I am. Stuart sees that. See, now Stuart on BS because she's on BS. Mr. Hughes's wife comes out with the... It's just all about matching energy, man. Just like if somebody was to come to y'all with a certain level of energy, y'all gonna meet that energy. And if you don't, you're gonna go home and think about it later like, dang, I just let him do that to me. Why would I let him do that to me in public? Now I got... You know what I'm saying? Logbooks for the vehicles. The issue we've got, this document is not proof of ownership. Well, so there's so nothing we can... Okay, previous registered keeper, Dylan Hughes. Yeah, because he's got so he... from his son. The documents aren't proof that Mr. Hughes no longer owns the vehicles. His wife gets him back on the phone. Mr. Hughes now makes an offer. My husband's asking, will yeah. you take part to pay It needs to be the full balance. Plan. It needs to be the full balance because we're here with an act of high court yes, rates. So that you can get your wages, so... You Not to do it my wages, I'm salaried, thank you very much. Renew payment. Yeah. From what I can understand, if yeah. you make an offer of payment, no. you can do it. No, not at all. We've got an act of high court writ, and these goods will clear the balance, so we're not going to accept a part payment. These goods will clear the balance? Yeah, of course. What we'll... fucking lot is worth more than the Exactly, bill. exactly. So we need so the full balance. Yeah. Free. Yeah. So that's why we need the balance. Surely you can understand uh, that. Uh, I was fucking born yesterday, why? you twat. With the real. She just went off. Like, here's my thing, though. If they take something and it exceeds the balance, do they give change? Like, they take it to auction, they get what they need, and do they send a, a check for the balance? Like, 
community it's mostly run by families it's been passed down from generation to generation they're either going to work with you or work against you there's no in between and we as high court enforcement agents have got to work on that and make them aware that we are there to do our job and that's what's going to happen mrs hughes now calls her son who she claims owns the vehicles <laughs> so i was born yesterday you in custom yeah us. exactly but you, who owns it he owns them. But he's only the registered key. Right. Any money is held for 14 days. So if you've got any issue with it, you can we apply for a refund. We haven't got the money to pay that. Right, you'll need to find it then, or else we'll remove the goods. How much is it? Uh, at the moment, okay. Is that going to be any more than after fucking moments? Well, if we remove place. goods, it'll go up. She really thinks she's in control of this situation. She said it's not going to be any more than at the moment. You're probably you trying to. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding out for you now. All right, just calm down. It is 2007. Hold on a minute, hold on. There you go. All right, okay. Hello. Yeah, the total amount, sir, at the moment is 2,732.87. If we start removing goods, sir, it's going to cost more because we'll have to bring recovery. There's recovery charges, the storage costs for seven days, etc., etc. Do you take cash? We do take cash, yes. Are you going to fucking wait until you get home? Right, okay. <laughs> Okay, how, how can you pay it? Will it be in cash, will it be debit card, or is there any way that you can transfer money? Yeah. All right. The threat of removing the farm's vehicles prompts Mrs. So how long is the wait going to be? Because they're, they're, they're going to just try to wait you out? Uses son to offer to help pay some of his father's debt. But it's not enough for Stuart. He says he hasn't got the... Stuart, you could take half. He just not... It's too late for that now, I guess. Mom then cursed you out. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got equipment there that he could just take and be done with it. Money, he's got 1,500 quid on the debit card now, which you can pay. But at the moment, I'm not accepting that. But then Mrs. Hughes has a final offer for the agents. You know what it's like? I've got better to like that with council tax. Yeah. I've lost my land. I don't want to borrow money from my son. I can pay £2,000 now yeah. with a card yeah. and I can pay the rest on the 1st of June. On the 1st of June? With a card. With a card. Yeah. Okay. And That's then, solid, Stuart. Come on now. Two bands. Take that. It. Okay. Yeah. Even this though she cursed you out. It's worse than anything. Oh. My husband's having a fucking nervous breakdown in there. Like, if he'd have his own way, we wouldn't be living here. He wants to leave the country because he's had enough. It seems as if the family farm has hit hard times. No, I'll, I'll, I'll ring them now. Stuart calls the office to see whether the £2,000 offer will be accepted. It will be. we got a proposal, mate, yeah, if anyone's free. Cheers, John. Speak to you shortly. Bye-bye. Yeah. The claimant has accepted Mrs. Hughes's offer. I apologize. No, don't shout. No, don't apologize. So much no, no, don't apologize. It's fine. And I do thank you for taking this. Yeah. Oh, my days. Cut it out. I don't know. See, now, this would blow me. Ma'am, you just called me all type of names, cursed me out, did this, did that. Now you're going to sit there with these tears in your eyes? Save it. Go get the card. I got the reader, and I hope you got Wi-Fi. That, see, that's how, see, that's why, and that's why I couldn't do the job. Because I wouldn't be trying to hear it. I wouldn't be trying to even see these tears. Save them. The offer, because... You're stuck. Yeah. Yeah. All right, no problem. Stuart puts the payment through. Like, I got a good, like, heart. I got a kind heart, but at, to a certain extent, you can't curse me out and then expect me to be kind at that point. Like, kind-hearted at least. That's, that's gone through. Sorted. Right, there's your card. Right. Take it easy, all right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. See you later. The case is resolved for now. But if the balance isn't paid off by the agreed date, the agents will be back. It looks like she's trying to keep the family together, to be completely honest, and uh, I think she's at the end of her tether now. Shame it just shows you how much pressure some people put on the shoulders trying to keep the family together just to keep the bills getting paid. W wife, I guess. Around 60. Curse them out there and pay. 
Around 16 million people in the UK rent their home, and one in four of them live with debt problems. 59% of households in rented accommodation have less than £1,000 in savings. Tenants are now twice as likely to be in debt as those who own their own homes. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Croydon to collect a debt of nearly £10,000. We ain't seen Brian and Dale together in a minute. Okay, salute. Owed in unpaid rent. We're going to see Mr. Eguraze Oibarumi and Mr. Ejiro Ugwajabo. £9,993.48. Rent there is. Mr. Oyubo Rume is the tenant in arrears, but Mr. Ubujabo signed as a guarantor should his friend default on his rent. As the tenant has not settled the debt, the Never agents are that. instructed to collect from the guarantor. They immediately spot an asset they could remove if guarantor Mr. Ubujabo can't or won't pay. That covers that, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, the Merc can do it. The Merc can do it. Nobody appears to be in, but the agents do have the power to seize assets, even when the debtor isn't at home. What I may do now is just get a clamp out and wriggle it about because we might be looking and um, this is we're going to clamp the car. They come running. What are you doing? What are you doing? I am partial to a nice car. If I see a nice car on the driveway, my eyes light up. Um, <laughs> it's an asset. It's something I can recoup money for the claimant. So I try and dig into that first. But before it can be seized, Brian calls the office to check whether the car is free of finance. Um, no finance, no finance. That's what we like to hear. The car's got no finance, no finance. Uh, finance on it, so we can take control of it. The reason we take this action is because we don't want the asset to go anywhere. That could be gone tomorrow in an hour's time, we'll never see it again. People may not agree with that, but if you're owed £10,000, you don't want us to take those steps for you. Brian's tactics pay off. Somebody appears at the window. Oh, hello. Would you like to come and open the door, please? Why? We're High Court Enforcement. We'd like to have a quick word. Correct. Are you taking someone to court? Well, no, we're not. Who are you, madam? Well, I live here. And what's your name? Do you want to come and open the door? You just do what okay, I was so going to do, take the car. Clamping, clamping the car's got what we want. We want someone in. So clearly watching us. Excuse me, what is this about? I don't know who you are, madam. I've identified myself to you. We'd like to speak to your parents if they're in. Could you get them on the phone so we can speak with them, then? Yeah, I have my mum on the phone. Well, if you come down, we'll be able to speak to her. OK, can, I have, can we have their number, then? Yeah, I'll give you her number. Thank you. I'm not coming down. OK, no problem. Brian calls Mr Upujabo's wife, Mercy. Hello. Hello, Mercy. My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm the High Court Enforcement Agent outside your home. What's the problem? It's for your husband, the gyro. There's a High Court writ. Yeah. OK, he's out of the country. Mm -hmm. When I get home, I'll tell him, can he call you back tomorrow? No. Whose vehicle's on your drive? <laughs> Who does that belong to? It's his. Okay. That needs to be paid now or we have to take control of the vehicle. We have to remove it. I don't really want to do that. Okay. Okay. If you wait there, mm -hmm. let me see if I can make an international call there. No problem at all. I appreciate that, Mercy. And, um, and um, see what I can do. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your okay. time. Yep. Bye now. Bye. If a debtor isn't in the country, it's a really slim chance. Are we of believe in that? I believe in the outstanding monies. They're not here. I can't get hold of them. It doesn't mean we can't. We just have to dig a little deeper. Minutes later, the debtor, Mr. Ejiro Ubujibo, calls. There he is. Hello, is that um, Ejiro? From what number? Yeah, what's happening? My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I've got a high court writ in my possession. A county court judgment was made against you and a gentleman. Mm -hmm. That's 
after one year, I do not intend to continue to be a director. Problem we've got, Ajara. I appreciate and respect what you're saying. Okay. Um, as it stands now, the claimant who is owed the rent and you being the guarantor has been made liable. Now, because there's a high court writ been made against you, the high court writ is still live and you need to pay it. I'm um, right now in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Why don't I make contact with you as soon as I come back and we'll resolve the issues? No. I need to make, I need to collect payment today, Ajaro. I understand you're out of the country, okay? You can make yeah. payment via debit card or you can make an internet payment. No, no, it wouldn't be possible to do that today. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take control of your car and remove it today, okay? <laughs> and then when you make the payment, then you can have it straight back, okay? Why don't you have internet in the village? Send me the details you're sending me, let me get back to you. Thank you very much. Let's see what happens. We've made our position very clear, so it's entirely up to him. He seems like a decent chap, a nice guy, but... He does. What he's saying probably is... real. He's got to pay. Bro's in a, Brian. He in a village somewhere, he might not be able to pay. No internet. Brian calls for a recovery truck in case Mr. Obujabo fails to get back to him with an acceptable offer. But then the debtor's daughter comes out of the house. She decides to move her car alongside the agent's van and blocks the road. <laughs> Ma'am, I suggest you move. We, they're going to get you for breach of the peace. You don't know what's going on. Stay in the child's place. You know what I'm saying? This situation here now, we've got a tow truck coming, and the tow truck will obviously need access. We, we, we'll we move, but whether she does or not, it could prove Stop difficult. No, she that, then, that then becomes obstruction, and we'll call the police, and she could be arrested for it. With the debtor out of the country, and the asset in the driveway blocked in, Will Brian and Dell ever get this case resolved? Absolutely. She cussing them out. Oh no. High Court Enforcement Agents. We don't need a ten best friend. Mr. Ubujabo was out of the country. Agents want control of your car and remove it. Decided to block the road. Now, with the recovery vehicle on its way, all the agents can do is wait to see if Mr. Ubujabo will call back to sell car the police too. Settle his debt. It's insignificant to me. It's people um, react in different ways. She chooses to jump in in a Volkswagen Polo she with tinted that. windows and people can't see her, but we can. Welcome to my world for an hour. Police fun, kind of, if the police come for her, she might take them on the chase. She got that oh, Volkswagen thing. What do you want to do? Suddenly, the daughter drives off. Then, this is wasting time. Dell gets another call. Hello. Yeah, I'm just calling you because I have no money. You don't have the money. It's Mr. Oyu Barumi, the tenant in rent arrears. For ain't no money, ain't nothing to talk about. The truck on the way. Figure it out in 14 days. Whom Mr. Ubujabo acted as a guarantor. The High Court have directed us to come and collect the money that's outstanding or to remove goods. Now you're the now you're the other person, aren't you? So you should be paying as well. That's good money. Yeah, because the doctor called that car in Nigeria. Well I'll tell you what's gonna happen is we're gonna take his car and you're gonna have to pay him, aren't you? He was doing you a favour, he stood guarantor, you breached whatever agreement uh. it is and he's been made to pay it. Now Right? You do him do a you favor. have any money to pay me today? Brian decides to give him an ultimatum. How would you like to pay eleven thousand two hundred eighty nine pounds and forty eight pence? Miss eleven thousand? I didn't even realize it was that much money. Mr. Oyubarume says he can't pay. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Bye bye. When a debtor lets down their guarantor. 
it's not a good thing. It's very sad. The guarantor then has the responsibility of dealing with that debt for the debtor, but they signed up to that. But ultimately, it's the debtor's debt, and they should deal with it. An hour after Brian first spoke to her, Mr. Obujabo's right. wife, Mercy, calls back. So you Hello, Mercy. Hi, Brian. Have you spoken to the actual culprit? Yeah, he's called me, but um, we haven't really got anywhere with him. He can't financially pay this, so no point in continuing the conversation with him. And I think it's a really unfortunate situation for your husband that he finds himself in. He's been a good man by helping this individual out. Yeah, that's how I see it. 100%. But in the, in the eyes of the law, he has became liable because he signed that piece of paper. I bet you he'll never do that again. Uh, as guarantor. Okay. Thank you, Mercy. Good luck. All right, then. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Is that the daughter again? Dang, this is like the second time we've only ever seen them take something. That's tough. With no sign of payment from the tenant or from his guarantor, the agents have no choice but to remove Mr. Ubujabo's car. And this tow truck is insane. I'm talking strap to the bottom, lift you right up out that spot, don't they? I'm pretty sure we got that in America, but I ain't never seen one, not in person. Mr. Obujabo now has 14 days to pay, or the car will be sold at auction. Imagine. Oh, okay. Got his car back. Was not paid. Oh, okay. That was thrown out. Okay. Two thrown out debts. His for sure. Like, absolutely. That, that shouldn't even be a thing. Alright. Till I leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.